How about all that voter fraud, folks? Does that instill you with confidence in the system? We'll talk about that. Mary Landrew down in Louisiana basically insulted all of the southern states. We'll talk about that. And what's up with uh, Casey Hickox up there in Maine? Thumbing her nose at any attempt to isolate Ebola should she be carrying it. We'll talk about that. And someone in the administration said something very unkind about Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We'll talk about that. Obama continues to sabotage Democrats right before the election. What's that all about? We'll talk about that too. Hello again, folks. This is the Ray Warner Show. I am Ray Warner, your host. Thank you so much for listening in. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, if you want to rant or vent, the email address is Show at gmail.com. You know, I've been watching this story of Casey Hickox. She is a nurse that went over to Africa to help treat Ebola patients. She comes uh, back to America, and the powers that be want to put her in a 21-day quarantine for obvious reasons. Here is Commissioner of Health and Human Services in Maine, Mary Mayhew. Individuals who had direct contact with Ebola patients stay in their home and avoid public contact until the 21 days for potential incubation has passed. We are seeing now that other states are adopting this common sense approach. Concerns about the lack of reliability and the lack of trustworthiness in the information that has been received and the basis upon which you determine risk is the ability to know the epidemiological history of any individual's exposure. You need to be able to have trust and credibility in that information. That makes her a higher risk. Well, it may be a common sense precaution, but Casey Hickox ain't having it. And that's it. She just ain't having it. She refuses to cooperate with Maine officials on any common sense safety measure they want to take. Now, if you didn't know, the English word quarantine comes from the word quaranta, quaranta, quaranta in Italian, which just means 40. During the time that the Black Plague was ravaging Europe, when a ship came into a port, it was immediately put into quaranta which meant the ship, the passengers, any animals that were on board, uh, everything, remained on board the ship for 40 days before they were allowed to come ashore. This was done to help prevent the spread of the Black Plague. And you could even go back further than that. Under the law of Moses in the Old Testament, people infected with a disease or virus had to leave the camp. And there were other reasons. Um, You know, if you came into contact with a dead body, for example, you had to leave the camp. It didn't matter why the body was dead or what they died of. If you came into contact for any reason, you uh, put yourself into isolation outside the camp for a specified time. Under the law, you were deemed unclean, which had nothing to do really with your actual cleanliness. Just being unclean uh, was your status. So quarantine is nothing new. When the astronauts returned from space, they were quarantined. And nobody complained about it. Having to be quarantined uh, may come with the territory of whatever job you choose or some other activity. In my opinion, dealing in any way with Ebola patients qualifies as an activity for which quarantine may be necessary. Now this woman, Casey Hickox, has recently been to the Ebola hot zone in Africa and, as a medical professional, treated Ebola patients. So upon her return, we the people fully expect this woman to be placed under quarantine. We even have quarantine laws in this country for such an event. But uh, Lady Insane says she will not comply because it's not based on science. 
You know, the chance of some undiscovered microbe living on the surface of the moon in the vacuum of space was extremely remote. But the astronauts were placed into quarantine for fear of that very thing. It was not based on science. It was based on the unknown. In the 1700s, when the ships were put under quarantine, not because of science, but because the Black Plague was deadly. Ebola is deadly. The death rate for Ebola is over 70%. I don't want Ebola. I'm sure you don't want Ebola. I'm sure the people in Maine don't want Ebola. So she should be quarantined, but she ain't having it. You know, try that next time you have a brush with the law. The next time, say, you're pulled over for speeding and you get a ticket, tell the judge you're not going to pay the fine. Simply refuse to comply because, you know, the speed limit is not based on science. Yeah, you know, yeah, tell the judge, you know, I have high performance tires on my car. They're perfectly safe for speeds over 100 miles an hour. So I'm just not going to comply. This ticket is not based on science. Complain that it's a civil rights issue. Okay, no, don't do any of that. I guarantee it won't work. Remember Dr. Craig Spencer? He's the doctor who was over there in Africa treating Ebola patients. He flew back to New York City. He went to a coffee shop. He went uh, to a restaurant. He rode around in one of those Uber cabs. He went bowling. Uh, And a week after returning from Africa, he developed Ebola. He is now being treated in Bellevue Hospital for it. But up until that point in time, up until he developed it, he wasn't feeling any symptoms. He wasn't feeling sick. He only started to feel sick the night he went bowling. Lady Insane says she has no symptoms and doesn't feel sick. Well, neither did Dr. Spencer. For the entire first week, he was here. A quarantine is not an unreasonable safety precaution in this case. And she wants to go back and treat Ebola patients again. So what does she expect? To just travel back and forth, unhindered, from Ebola hot zones to America? Now, the more I think about this, the more I wonder, what's really going on? I mean, I understand this is going to sound like some crazy conspiracy rant, but here goes. What would you put past this administration? Ask yourself that question. What would you put past an administration that would use the IRS to target political opponents? What would you put past an administration that would hack a reporter's computer and even install a fiber optic line into her home without her knowledge? What would you put past those people? What would you put past an administration that never wants to let a good crisis go to waste? You know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's obvious Obama wants Ebola here in America. I'm convinced he wants it here. He wants an outbreak He wants it to spread. I mean, when you consider his response to the Ebola crisis, there's just no other conclusion. He is doing the opposite of what he should do if his intention was to keep Ebola out. So there's no question in my mind he wants it here. If he wanted to keep it out, there are things he would do. There are travel bans he would put in place. He would be behind this quarantine. He would want it contained he says, he says he wants it contained in Africa, but he would also want it contained here when it does come here or when there's even the remote threat that it could be here. But he hasn't done any of that. In fact, he fights against it. Now, he was asked about uh, the quarantining of people returning from Ebola hot zones. This is what he said. We're just putting another barrier on somebody who's already doing really important work on our behalf. So again, he goes in the wrong direction. Now this woman, Casey Hickox, is a leftist. She's a leftist, rabid Obama supporter. And this is not insignificant. See, once you understand that you're dealing with a liberal, then you understand why there seems to be no common sense in the decision-making process of the individual. Not to mention, as a liberal, rules do not apply. Rules are for everybody else. They're not for them. And you also have to remember, the left makes a political issue out of everything. To them, this is about how it can be used, how it can be used to their advantage, how it can be used to further their agenda. 
It's about that long before it has anything to do with what's right for America or what's right for public safety or whatever the real goal should be. Keep that in mind as you listen to George Stephanopoulos over at ABC interview Casey Hickox. We know that the state of Maine would like you to abide by a voluntary quarantine until the 21 days have passed, but you say you're not going to do it. You know, I remain really concerned by these mandatory quarantine policies. Now, did you hear that? Did you hear Casey Hickox answer a different question than the one that was asked her? Here it is again. We know that the state of Maine would like you to abide by a voluntary quarantine until the 21 days have passed, but you say you're not going to do it. You know, I remain really concerned by these mandatory quarantine policies. George Stephanopoulos asked Lady Insane about a voluntary quarantine, but she responded about a mandatory quarantine. To me, that speaks volumes, especially knowing it's coming from a liberal. This is what they do. They redefine the argument. I don't know if George Stephanopoulos was even aware or why he didn't press the issue, but he asked her about a voluntary quarantine, which would put the ball in her court. I mean, it's voluntary. You're a health professional. You're over there in Africa battling Ebola, trying to contain the virus. So when you come here, what? That All that goes out the window? You have no wish to contain it? I mean, to say it's voluntary puts the ball in her court. It gives us the idea that it's just a common sense solution to the problem. But as a liberal, she has to somehow make herself a victim. So the word she used was mandatory. Even though there has not been any mandatory quarantine to speak of. She even left her house and went for a bike ride. I mean, is that not a giant middle finger to the world? She rode her bike down the street, her and her boyfriend, just to show us all that she refuses to comply It's not enough to just piss everybody off. She has to be in our face about it. I mean, typical kook liberal at work. She was also asked about going back to Africa. Would you go back and serve in Africa again? Absolutely. I, in fact, plan on doing so. So there you have it. After she gets her way with her refusal to submit to quarantine, and believe me, I'm sure she will, She'll be free to come and go as she pleases to Ebola-infected Africa and the U.S., which will set a precedent for some other dangerous people to follow. I'm sure Obama is grinning ear to ear over that. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Serving America by serving you. You're listening to The Ray Warner Show. 21 Signs of Doomsday, God Said, Man Said, dot com. Noah's Ark, fact or fiction? Geologists say yes to crucifixion. Science says eat butter. God Said, Man Said, dot com. Scientists study speaking in tongues. Hours of text and audio. God Said, Man Said, dot com. Doctors flummox, but what they found in female brains? St. Peter's fish, hell worms, extraterrestrials amongst us. God Said, Man Said, dot com. Israel, a nation born of liberty, freedom, and hope. America's unwavering friend. Israel is now fighting for its survival against an enemy who thinks nothing of sacrificing Palestinian women and children as human shields. Hamas is using its own children as human shields. A nearby mosque is boasting about rockets being fired at Jerusalem, at Tel Aviv, at Haifa. It's hard to comprehend, but it's true. As Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said, here's the difference. We're using missile defense to protect our civilians, and they're using their civilians to protect their missiles. Hamas thinks nothing of killing innocent Israelis and Americans. Hamas took billions in humanitarian aid meant for schools and hospitals and used the money for the tools of war terror tunnels, and weapons. Stand up to this outrage. Make your voice heard. Visit StopHamasNow.com and sign our petition. Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Ray Warner Show. I am your host, Ray Warner. If you want to email the show, if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, feel free. The email address is Show at gmail.com. We have now learned that the roommate of Casey Hickox over in Africa had Ebola. Is that not significant to this story? 
This was in the uh, state of Maine's legal action for quarantine, which Hickox has now defeated. So she has now beat back the quarantine effort, and I'm telling you that's not a good precedent to have been set. Barack the first must be loving it. You know, I've been talking about how Obama is torpedoing Democrat campaigns, but Mary Landrew doesn't need his help. She has decided to torpedo her own campaign. This has to be the dumbest move of this election cycle. Here is Mary Landrew describing why Democrats are losing support uh, down in her state. The South has not always been the friendliest place for African Americans. It's been a difficult time for the president to present himself in a very positive light as a leader. It's not always been a good place for women to be able to present ourselves. It's more of a conservative place. So we've had to work a little bit harder on that. But, you know, but the people trust me, I believe. Really, they do, to trust me to do the right thing for the state. So Mary Landrieu says the problem is the people in the South are racist. That's why Obama has a hard time showing himself as a leader. This man wouldn't know how to lead if he tried. His idea of leading is leading from behind. But the problem down there is uh, the people in the South are racist. He has to work extra hard because the people in the South are racist. And also against women, she said. In fact... They are so against women in the South that Mary Landrieu is serving her third term as senator in Louisiana. How much sense does that make? I mean, this woman is about a half bubble off plum. So never mind Obama killing her campaign. She's done that herself. You know, and I'm really starting to wonder what is going on in Obama's head. I mean, he is so toxic uh, to the Democrats right now. His popularity has plummeted. His poll numbers have hit rock bottom. He is losing support in every demographic, every group of all the little groups, you know, Democrats separate people into, uh, the blacks, the Hispanics, women. Every group has had it with Obama. Even the cool, hipster, metrosexual millennials have had enough of this fool. And the Democrats know it. They do not want Obama anywhere near their campaigns. He's not traveling the country supporting candidates. If anything, he's traveling the country torpedoing these Democrats. And they're in full panic mode. Remember not too long ago, Barack I said this? Now, I'm not on the ballot this fall. Michelle's pretty happy about that. <laughs> but make no mistake, these policies are on the ballot. Every single one of them. He's not on the ballot, but boy, his policies sure are. This comment made liberals all but slap the forehead in disbelief. What was he thinking? David Axelrod even called it a mistake. It sent Democrat candidates reeling, trying to figure out how to distance themselves from Obama and still be liberals. They're already having a tough enough time running campaigns on nothing. What can they say? Vote for me so I can give you more of this? So I can give you more unemployment? So I can give you more Obamacare, higher premiums, so uh, gas prices can go up, food prices can go up. Vote for me so I can help Obama weaken the nation some more. Is that what they're running on? They have no platform. They can't run on their record. Liberal policies always fail. They always have. They always will. And now Democrat candidates are in full panic mode. You always know uh, when that happens because they play the race card. That's how you know they have nothing left and they don't know what to do. They just start playing the race card. But Obama, he doesn't seem to have any problem sabotaging Democrat campaigns. I mean, that's not the only thing he said. There's been other stuff and even the media is trying to help him, trying to carefully let him know that he's making a mistake by saying this stuff. But he continues. He doubles down. He was speaking in Rhode Island the other day and he said this. No matter how many times Republicans threaten to repeal this law, we're going to keep it in place because it's working. How can that not be sabotaging Democrat campaigns? Republicans want to repeal Obamacare, but we are going to keep it in place. Is that a threat? And then he says, because it's working. Who thinks Obamacare is working? How is it not a sabotage to Democrats to threaten America. 
Americans do not support Obamacare. I mean, it's almost like 80% do not support it. They're against it. And days before the midterms, he says that. I mean, what is that? The American people did not want Obamacare. It was rammed down our throats without a single Republican vote. The American people still do not want Obamacare. But he's going to continue his boot-on-the-throat strategy and days before the election say something like that? I mean, talk about dropping a bomb on these poor Democrats. I don't understand it. I cannot recall a president actively doing everything he can to intentionally torpedo his own party before any election. It just baffles me. Now, we all know there is a great gulf between Obama and the truth. We know there is a clear and distinct separation. Obama and the truth cannot coexist in the same universe. It's just not possible. So, in the same way that I conclude Obama wants Ebola in Africa, I am forced to conclude that Obama doesn't want Democrats to win in these midterms. Of course, you know, the Democrats themselves already know they're going to lose, and lose big. They're not even trying to win, really. They're just trying to minimize the loss, to contain the damage, if you will. So, why is it Obama clearly doesn't want Democrats to win? Ask yourself that question. Obama has had to deal with a divided Congress. Republicans have the House and Democrats have the Senate. And like I said, Democrats are just trying to contain the damage. They're going to lose, but they're hoping to at least hold on to the Senate. Obama seems to be doing everything he can to make sure that doesn't happen. He's purposefully bombing Democrat campaigns. So... Why does he want Democrats to lose? Why help Republicans take the Senate? How is that an advantage to him, to his agenda? If anyone out there has any thoughts on this, email that to me because I can't figure it out. I really want to figure out what advantage he has in Republicans taking the Senate. Stay there. We'll be right back. Had enough of all the media bias? Tune into the Ray Warner Show. John and I just couldn't afford health insurance anymore. We exercise, we eat right, and we live a healthy lifestyle. Yet we were paying over $800 per month for a family of four. Then a friend told us about MediShare. MediShare isn't insurance. It's a nationwide network of Christians who save money by sharing in each other's medical bills. Our share is almost 40% less than our old insurance premiums. We still see the same doctors and use the same hospitals if something does happen. The best part is that participating in MediShare exempts us from the tax penalties in the new health reform laws. So as long as we're in the program, the government's mandates to buy expensive insurance won't apply. You should call them today. I'm sure glad we did. If you're a Christian, under 65, and a non-smoker, then MediShare could be the right choice for you. Call 1-866-330-8585 or visit meta-share.org. You do have a choice. Are you concerned about your privacy, identity theft, corporate eavesdropping? Who's listening in on your confidential calls? Silent Circle's innovative suite of encrypted communication services allows you the privacy you need and the ease of use you deserve. We've built a customized system focused on security, simplicity, and service, fashioned from the ground up by our team of world-renowned experts with no logging, no data farming, and no backdoors of any kind for anyone. When a Silent Circle subscriber makes a phone call, sends a text, or exchanges a file with another Silent Circle member, that transmission is encrypted, peer-to-peer, end-to-end, direct from your own mobile device or personal computer. With the addition of OutCircle access, You can even call individuals outside the circle knowing you're still encrypted to and from the silent network. Whether you're a small business concerned with corporate espionage, a governmental organization tasked to safeguard sensitive operations, or an individual protecting your family, you can trust Silent Circle's user-friendly apps and services to provide you with an affordable alternative to the risk you've had to accept until now. 
Silent Circle's groundbreaking global platform is the world's standard for secure mobile communications. Send a secure text across town or whisper in someone's ear 10,000 miles away. Silent Circle has revolutionized how the world communicates securely. Get in the circle. Yes, let us pray for the salvation of all of those who live in that totalitarian darkness. They are the focus of evil in the modern world. But if history teaches anything, it teaches that simple-minded appeasement or wishful thinking about our adversaries is folly. It means the betrayal of our past, the squandering of our freedom. So I urge you to speak out against those who would place the United States in a position of military and moral inferiority to ignore the facts of history and the aggressive impulses of an evil empire and thereby remove yourself from the struggle between right and wrong and good and evil. Any objective observer must hold a positive view of American history, a history that has been the story of hopes fulfilled and dreams made into reality. America has kept alight the torch of freedom, but not just for ourselves, but for millions of others around the world. We must never forget that no government schemes are going to perfect man. We know that living in this world means dealing with what philosophers would call the phenomenology of evil, or as theologians would put it, the doctrine of sin. There is sin and evil in the world, and we're enjoined by Scripture and the Lord Jesus to oppose it with all our might. We will never compromise our principles and standards. We will never give away our freedom. We will never abandon our belief in God. All right, we're back. Thank you all so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate those of you who uh, listen to this, The Ray Warner Show. I am your host, Ray Warner. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, the email address is Show at gmail.com. Did you hear about what someone in the administration said of Benjamin Netanyahu? I won't repeat it. But whoever it is, use the word that just amounts to calling him a coward. So we'll just go with that. The best part of this story was the White House correspondent for Fox News, Ed Henry, asking the White House press secretary, Josh Earnest, about why they don't seem to care who leaked this information. Listen to this. The administration also has a long track record uh, over the many months about complaining about leaks involving national security. Um, we've seen threats to reporters like James Risen to potentially be thrown in jail over leaks to him. James Rosen's phone records gone through because of leaks to him. And my question going back to the Israel story is, why then are you kind of sloughing off this idea that you kind of don't care who leaked that story that might have, in, that not might have, that insulted the Prime Minister of Israel? You, you've gone after reporters again and again, this administration, to find out who leaked information to them. And then when it comes to insulting the Prime Minister, you don't seem to care who leaked it. So he points out, you guys go after reporters. You guys go after reporters for leaking stuff, but this, you just don't care. Now, when you hear Josh Ernest answer him, keep in mind the story of Cheryl Atkinson's computers being hacked and a fiber optic line installed in her home without her knowledge. With that in mind, listen to his answer. I don't think that is an accurate uh, reflection of the administration's policy, and it certainly isn't an accurate reflection uh, of our views of the Prime Minister of Israel. Has the Department gone after a whole series of reporters? Uh, No, they haven't. And in fact, they've actually put in place measures under the leadership of the Attorney General to ensure uh, that journalists in this country are able to do their jobs. Yeah, this administration is doing everything it can to help reporters do their jobs. Right, nothing sinister going on here. You know, getting back to the elections and Obama not wanting Democrats to win, when I talk about Democrats trying to contain the damage, there's just no end to what they'll do. I don't mean the candidates themselves or even their operatives. I mean, the fraud knows no boundary. Also, keep in mind that liberals can't win if the debate is only in the realm of policy and ideas. Conservative policies win every single time. Conservative values win every single time. Ronald Reagan won the landslide elections running on conservative values. He won 49 of 50 states. 
The only state he didn't win was Minnesota, Walter Mondale's home state. Think about that. He won states like Massachusetts, Maryland, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, Oregon, California, Washington. The conservative Republican won those states running on strong conservative principles. That's how you win. And if another strong conservative ever runs again, we'll see landslides again. That's how difficult it is for liberals to win uh, in, when it comes to debating ideas. They have to move to the right to get elected. They have to lie about who they really are and what their intentions are. They have to smear their opponent. They have to bully and intimidate. They have to ram their policies through and then lie about the results. Not to mention an ever-fawning media always on their side. So they can't win, and they know it. So they work to alter the outcome of elections. I brought you the story of how voting machines are selecting the Democrat candidate, even though the voter is clearly selecting the Republican. You can see a video of that on YouTube. Now, I don't think Obama is behind that. I'm not that crazy into conspiracy. I don't think any Democrat candidate is behind that. But no candidate has to be. Neither does Obama. Who programmed the machine? Who calibrated it? Have you ever started up a touchscreen device and the first thing it wants you to do is calibrate the screen? So you have to touch the targets with your stylus or your finger or whatever. You know, the targets come up in the corners and then in the center or however the device has you do it. You calibrate the screen so that when you touch the screen, it knows where you're touching it. There's a good chance that someone had to do that when they fired up the voting machines. And I'm willing to bet you that there was some calibration involved. And if that person was a liberal and they know if they miscalibrate the machine properly, ever so slightly, it creates an advantage, right? I know, crazy conspiracy. Obama pulled Border Patrol off the border allowing hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of illegal aliens in the country. Now, James O'Keefe has released video of liberals assisting them in voting. Now, I'm not saying Obama planned that, but he didn't have to. He did his part letting them in, and lesser rank-and-file liberals took over from there. There was no plan. They don't need to plan. They know what to do. Lois Lerner didn't need to be told to target conservatives. She did that instinctively. Eric Holder, he didn't need to be told not to prosecute the Black Panthers for voter intimidation. He did that instinctively. After the voting machine fraud was uncovered, what did the county clerk in Rock Island County, Illinois, say? Oh, that's no big deal. They're just targeting us. She made herself a victim. Typical liberal. It's so easy to spot. So right now, we're hearing all of this voter ID suppression, early voting fraud, illegal aliens voting, machines miscalibrated. And, uh, of course, there's that other demographic that the Democrats always win, the dead vote. When he ran for the Senate, entire cemeteries in Chicago voted for Obama. So who knows how deep the fraud goes? Just remember, Obama doesn't have to give out marching orders. These people know what to do. If there's liberals in charge of voting machines, they know what to do. If there's liberals in charge of getting people signed up to vote, they know what to do. And that's going to do it for today, folks. Thank you again so much for listening to The Ray Warner Show. I am Ray Warner. If you want to email me, if you have any comments or questions, any problems with something I've said, you can email me at Show at gmail.com. And I'm so thankful that you listen. There are any number of ways you can listen to the show. And the daily quick reports. Uh, you can subscribe right there on the website, thereaywarnershow.com. You can subscribe to YouTube. Uh, you can get the show through iTunes. Uh, I post every show on Facebook and on Twitter. However you listen, I'm so thankful that you do. And we'll see you next week. So long. Mm-hmm.